This is Reasonable Doubt with your hosts, Mark Garrigus and Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get on. Church with going to make it. Get on. Welcome to the best hour or so in the universe. It's Reasonable Doubt. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Mark Hard Out Garrigus. <laughs> Save it for air. I um, save it for air, Gargus. Where where do we even begin? We can begin in New York with Tish James and uh, Trump. We could begin with the the special master in Trump. We could begin with the Valley. We could begin with Florida. But you know where I wanted to just mention because hmm. you may not have seen it. There's a. Um, La Cunata has been very happening recently. I don't know if you're aware of this. I saw you circumnavigating the neighborhood this morning. Yes. About uh, 1010. Is exactly right. Crossing Foothill. Exactly right. And now, Gary, can you please describe this article? Because this... I mean, be careful who you shout out while you're, while you're circumnavigating the neighborhood. Because <laughs> one of your neighbors has just been uh, arrested for allegedly a double murder to hire. And really? Steve, oh yep. yeah. Oh, he wanted yeah. he wanted to kill two different people who had and lost. I've, I've got my own uh, brushes with the law over there in La Cunata because I've got my second notice that my house that had been TP'd and uh, my and house, they cited you because it yes, been my house gets TP'd on a regular basis <laughs> and I normally just sort of keep walking uh-huh. like I'm like hey. Yeah, I come out in the morning, I go, boy, you guys really did a job this this week on the house. The only time it really impacted me is when one of the um, intrepid TPers actually left a ribbon <laughs> across the front of the driveway attached to a mailbox and a, you know, and a trail. Was it like trail. a finish line? Yeah. Yeah. And so I thought, you know, my my policy with the TPing is I don't get out of my car and I don't deal with it. I do. This sounds weird. I will gather it up and use the toilet paper. I had a (laughs) drawer in my bathroom filled with unsprung toilet paper, Ooh, toilet paper so that been de re- recycle. And then Olga will come up with whole rolls. <laughs> and uh, I, I haven't had to buy toilet paper in three years. <laughs> well, but, the reason... But uh, when I drove through the ribbon... Wait, yeah. Did you feel like you were a winner? Initially, <laughs> but then the way it broke is it basically wrapped itself around both outside rearview mirrors, and then I just dragged, and I had to physically clean that up. So it was super effective. But then I got I got the summons to clean it up. So I cleaned it up, but I can't get the three-foot pieces that are up, up, in, the up tree. in altitude. Right. They're, they're, you break it all off. It's now up. I can't get to it. And I got the second summons for that. Well, remember. Well, I won't. I won't belabor this, but there, remember, you were when you sold the other house, and you had the that beautiful what, that I walk by every day. That kind of, uh, I guess, a covering or a little mini bridge. Yes. The, yeah. Yes. That was another one. Another <laughs> of the building and safety and locking out. But the reason I like this story, I thought you would enjoy it. First of all, the accused is Armo. No, oh, yeah, of course, sure. Do you know what the motivation was? <laughs> well, without saying apparently, yeah. Do you well, know what the motivation for hiring? There's white people, hiring? Asians, and Armos in this neighborhood. And this is not the act of okay. either the Asian or the or white. This, this case is an Armo move. Is exactly like a case I defended maybe 15 years ago with a female, where the cops had somebody who was cooperating as the hitman, and the hitman came over. And apparently you can get you can buy a hitman for twenty grand. And so it was twenty grand to kill guess who? Hmm. The lawyer who he owed a bunch of hourly fees to. And I immediately said, everything I've been saying for 30, 40 years to uh, clients is even I, when I have lawyers after two two months, I want to kill them. Uh be, when I get the second hourly bill. Right. Apparently this guy actually did it. But the, the bad- lawyer, it's worth noting, the lawyer successfully defended the bankruptcy case. Right. So he got him the victory. And this Except guy, instead of paying it. up. Yeah. 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 Well, he figured, why am I going to pay 200 grand in attorney's fees if I can pay a hitman 20? And they, the one feature that I is a very difficult fact to get over, because I had the same one, was they show the person 
apparently the aftermath of the killing. And so the person, the hitman was successful. Yeah, like you're supposed to get a reaction. That was one of the conditions, by the way, of this guy's $20,000 hit. It was 20000 ahead, but then he wanted picture evidence that it had happened. So it's a contingency I, I arrangement. Know, I don't know how the law works, but <laughs> you you do. If, if you were hit by a car crossing Foothill Boulevard today, today uh, as many of your clients wish you were, <laughs> wouldn't they still be on the hook for whatever your office had billed would, them out for the billable hours? You would think the estate would would, yes. uh, would still come after them. Well, it was he a, a just single attorney that had and no associates. You know, or? one of the problems with this this particular case is there wasn't a whole lot of there was a lot of detail, but they didn't. The detail was kind of run on. It didn't give you like stuff like that. Like, who's the lawyer? Was he a big firm, small firm? You know, those, those kinds of things that are good facts that you want. But I love or just show the picture of the staged aftermath of the killing. So he get, when did this how, yesterday so or arrested yesterday? I believe so. Yeah, it was certainly I saw the article. Lock and yacht is just we got one guy over here. We got our famous realtor over here who's got a twenty four million dollar judgment and uh, for uh, supposedly bing bang bonging with the uh, with the nephews. We got another guy who's hiring a hitman uh, and they're showing the aftermath. Lock and yacht. You think of it as a sleepy little hamlet. <laughs> is is and so it's the guy who hired the hit who's the La Cunata resident. Correct. Armo La Cunata resident. So he's probably been to your Christmas party. I mean, you probably had Don Julio with him in the last, but I don't the, know, two the years. attorney was not a La Cunata base. I, they guy. didn't even tell us that. That's what I wanted to know. Was it's he... all victim one and victim two. It's yeah. very vague when it comes to the, you know, presumably still alive. And oh. how did they catch the guy? Apparently the hit man cooperated, rolled on the guy. Mm -hmm. I I don't know if it was necessarily the hitman per se, but it was like his associate who was being the go-between met with a... The liaison for the hitman. Yeah, he met with an ATF agent. Where does one find a hitman these Craig's days? List? Is it? <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> well, well, I would have no used idea. to be Soldier of Fortune or something. You just go to the back page. And they had it. I, I don't think they labeled them hitmen, but, uh, you know, maybe guys who were good, you know, like Mr. Wolf or something. Fixers don't you think or 20 grand is, re- I know it's a lot of money, but it still seems rather cheap to me. All the hits that I've heard of, and then there's a, a real, you know, Ray Carruth version of the hiring the hitman where it's like, Forty five hundred bucks. Yeah, I mean, and I mean, then you is... say, Jesus, okay, who do you get for that? By the way, if you're going to solicit murder and you're going to get punished, you know, potentially by the life sentence, wouldn't you want to invest a little bit more? I, 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 it, it's alarming how cheap it is to get somebody murdered, murdered, and, and how many alarming. people are out there sort of willing to take four grand. But it's a version of. In a weird way, it's the guy robs the Seven Eleven, takes eighty six bucks out of the register, and caps the guy behind the counter like that. That's murder, and right. it's under a hundred bucks. Right. So um, that's ongoing, or that's okay. breaking. That's breaking. Now we have another one in the valley. You know, and the the one I sent this to Gary today because I've got a cl- another client who lives overseas, and he has not been to L A in five years, and I awakened today because he's on European time, and he's staying at a very nice hotel on the west side. And he was ta- he, and he says, what a shithole L.A. is. Oh, he hasn't been here he for five years. He hasn't been here for five years. Yeah. And he's texting. You should see. I mean, he keeps saying, this is just, I've never seen anything like it. I, I grew up here. He says, I haven't been here is for he five in years. downtown, did you say? No, he's on the west side. Oh, sorry. Said, the yeah. But nicer I, part of town. Yeah. I wanted to bring him downtown, and he and he wants to escape the west side. He's in a... I won't name the hotel because he's still here, but he's at a very nice hotel. He's just aghast at what has happened to L.A. in the last five years. And he keeps telling me, why are you even here? He says, New York isn't like this. And I said, you know, you obviously don't listen to the podcast. I talk about that with Adam on a weekly basis that for whatever you want to say about New York, it is not what has happened to L.A. And then I get sent this. Have you seen this? No. 
I'm half paralyzed, I'm blind, I have no card for nine years. We offer to help the man with services for the homeless, but... Sir, do you need help? The city is offering help. Every day is like another adventure of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. It is like a psych, literally a psych ward. Sherman Oaks, Ventura Boulevard, just so people know, that was sort of the... Beverly Hills of the Valley. Yeah, it it's the Rodeo Drive at one right. point. And by the way, I've been complain. I feel like I just channeled this guy. I'm downtown yesterday. It was the same thing. The poor guy who who works has worked for me for years, who just turned 72, who is battling. I call him the mayor of downtown because he's battling the outdoor psych ward that surrounds the building. And it's that's exactly what this guy says. They are shooting up. They are throwing feces at you. They piss on anything that they can. And they they just are they scream at you and it's mind boggling. Why why does this why is this allowed? And what has happened to LA? It is literally in the last five years. It and then you check the numbers, and Karen Bass has got an 11-point right. lead yeah. over Rick Caruso, who would like to do something about this. I, it It's at a point where you're just at a loss for words. You're like, what is happening? Why is it happening? Who's it benefiting? What are we doing? I don't understand the end game. I'm, I've said I've been a lifelong um, guy on the left, but this is not, and I have great compassion for that guy who's on the street. I mean, I really do. I mean, he's obviously in the throes of something, but you're not helping him. How is that helping him? And how is it, who wants that? I feel for the business owner who sits there and he's like, every morning I got to deal with feces being thrown at me and having to deal with this. It's exactly, that guy channels every feeling I've got when I go to work in the morning. I just couldn't imagine paying the kind of rent you'd pay on Ventura Boulevard and Sherman Oaks and the kind of taxes and all the, you know, I've always said it like this. Look, if they just went, fuck it, it's a free for all. It's Thunderdome. We're not going to take taxes and we're not going to have health inspectors and you can do whatever the fuck you want with your business. Don't worry about OSHA and don't worry about workman's comp. Just fucking it's a free for all, and there's going to be crazy homeless guys. And you take some of that money that you're spending on the taxes and OSHA and, and all the compliance things, and just hire a couple of security guys. To exactly. Stand up. But I do it. I'll, what, if that's what I've got to be, I'll do. I'll, we, 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 but but do. what LA does simultaneously <laughs> is get the most in tax and have the most regulation and have the most compliance. And then not do any policing of any of the crazy people that are out front of the business. It's so fixable. I it's it's not brain surgery. And then you have these situations that um, Gary and I have been talking the last two shows about this whole situation with the sheriff, and it has to be the most frustrating situation I've ever seen, where the Sheriff is trying to clean up um, various situations which are arguably corrupt. And all he meets is he gets the L.A. Times. uh, You know, I feel like it's an endless story. They just manipulate everything. Have you seen – I'm sending Gary these things on an hourly basis where I said, Gary, read this and then read how the Times reports it. Am I lying? I, no, I've seen no responsible – I've seen some sort of responsible reporting, but I've seen no one who appears to have just straight read up, read the search warrant and then written an article. There's this the all, Sheila Kill thing? Yeah. 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 It's mind-boggling. Like, by the, I was doing a, a riff on the fact that the sheriff complained to the attorney general 
that Sheila Kuehl does a uh, press conference. She's a city council member. She's the board of su- one of the five board of supervisors, no. and she says, "Well, the county council's office, which is the law firm for the county employees, so it's Alex Villanueva, who is our county sheriff, and Sheila Kuehl, who's a county supervisor, are represented by the same firm, which is the county council." She says, in a press conference, we played it. Do you have it? The He'll play it in a second. She says, I was tipped off by the county council that they were going to come in tomorrow morning, to this morning at 7 o'clock on a search warrant. Wait, what? You were tipped off that a search warrant was coming? Right. And, and – to your house at seven o'clock, and you think that's something you're going to announce at a in a in a thing? And and it, it's like L.A. Times is they're heralding the fact that another judge, Judge Ryan, issued an order that they have to press pause on and get a special master, which I understand. But I, I said to Gary, when Trump does it, all these people, ah, oh, this fucking you know crazy goddamn. Um, uh, lawyers for Trump want a special master for the ex-president of the United States, but Sheila Kuehl wants a special master when she's been tipped off by somebody for a search warrant? We've reached crazyville. Well, look, we have become... The, the problem with California and the problem with L.A. is we have be, we are, you know, a Democratic supermajority, and they don't feel like they have any natural enemies in the wild out there. And so they do whatever they want. They say whatever they want. Nothing has to get better. They have the Los Angeles Times in their back pocket. And so it just continues. And at some point, it, it, whether you're a politician or your government or you're selling tacos – if you think you have a monopoly, Jake, Jake, thanks Jake you for the plug. <laughs> no, but uh, let's bring up Jake. There are thousands of other places that sell tacos. Jake must do a taco. He must perform with his taco at a higher level in order to try to scratch away some of that market share. If you said to Jake, starting tomorrow, there shall be no other taco sales other than your own. It's just you now. I've gotten rid of everyone. You you just do what you think. I, and look, make the best taco you can make or or not or, not, uh, or right. whatever. The what his tacos went from today when he was scratching and clawing for some market share versus you've have the market corner and you can do whatever you want. You tell me you taste that taco a year from now and tell me if it's anywhere near what it is today. So in California and Los Angeles, it's just a Democratic supermajority. They don't feel like there's a competition. They don't feel like they have to earn it. And there's that, as the great Gavin Newsom uh, said two years ago on a radio show, where are you going to go? Yeah. Where well, are we going to But leave? check this out, the brazenness of this. Gary, or can you press play on this? Was Sheila Kuehl the one who... Right after we shut down, uh, she indoor voted dining. to yep. shut down outdoor dining and promptly drove straight <laughs> to El Forno to dine outdoors. Right, but, and so because there are no consequences here. Right, here's a search warrant being executed. Here's what she says. Uh, I heard from county council last night that she got a tip from Max that this search would happen. M- Max Huntsman? Yeah, from Max Huntsman that this search would happen this morning. But I had gotten a call from the LA Times last week with the same information, and it never happened, so I thought it was just bogus. Okay, let me explain this. The LA Times is tipping off the subject of a search warrant the week before. <laughs> The guy, Max, that they're referring to, I know him. It's Max Huntsman, former DA in the Public Integrity Unit, who's now the oversight over the sheriff, is tipping off, supposedly, if you believe this, a county council to tip off the subject. And she's... And she's just, that's it. I, You know, that's that's how we roll. Right. This is... There's two big problems here. It's the Democratic supermajority... And it's I'm a woman or I'm a woman of color, I'm a whatever. So if you come at me, 
I'll just say you're racist or misogynist or uh, sexist or whatever it is. So then they just sort of walk around with impunity. I want the thought experiment. I use that. That's your line, and I, I've ripped it off. I want the thought experiment. Instead of Sheila Kuehl, it's Donald Trump, and we're at Mar-a-Lago. And he comes out and he says, well, Secret Service, who, uh, you know, I put this guy in, in charge of me, he got a tip last week that they were coming in here, but I thought it was bogus from the uh, Daily Caller. And now I, um, I got it last night. The OIG for the FBI called the, uh, the law firm, my law firm, and told me they were coming in this yeah, morning. We'd, we'd be outraged. CNN Outrage! They would, I, people, you'd have people. You'd have people's. Uh, it would be Mount Vesuvius on the uh, on uh, on MSNBC. All right, let me throw it to <laughs> Plural Sight. Let me tell you about Plural Sight. They believe everyone should have the opportunity to create progress through technology. Plural Sight is a tech workforce development company that provides the solutions that high performance engineering teams need to tackle today's biggest challenges. Whether you need to build the skills, individuals, and teams to tackle mission-critical projects, drive cloud transformation, or help software teams ship reliable, scalable, and secure code, you can harness the collective power of hindsight, foresight, and insight with Pluralsight. Check them out today at Pluralsight.com slash vision. Yeah, well, something's got to change. Now, is Sheila Kuehl in trouble for awarding um, contracts to her friend, or is that Karen Bass? It's Sheila Kuehl. That's the – and by the way, Gary, I, I said, don't trust me. Re, the sheriff's office released the affidavit. Very similar – that's why I keep saying – do the thought experiment every time you want so, to scram. Just so, just, just so people know, she has a very close friend. I think she presided at uh, over the wedding, the wedding and things yeah. like that and has awarded contracts for some sort of bogus hotline thing. That yeah, never- it's a, a, a piece over violence where they're charging eight grand to call even for hangups. Right. So hundreds- and there's emails where it's where the chief of staff is saying, be expansive in your your request for the budget. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. She then awarded the contract to a friend who has this phone line that does nothing. Awarded it in a no bid, bid. situation right, where right. she where they, it's called a single source right. where the presumption was that there was no other service in the county of Los Angeles who could have provided said service. Right. When meanwhile the sheriffs include in the affidavit three to four other options that they believe would be be able to provide the service for free using other grants that they get from other ways. Right. So the and now the L.A. Times who must hate this kind of graft and corruption, especially by politicians, <laughs> because this is. This is the well-heeled, rich people that are canoodling with uh, their own and getting getting rich off the backs of the taxpayers. So they're going to want to blow the lid off this thing, right? Yeah. Well, except they tipped off the subject that the search warrant was being executed. Then could you find any more – Gary probably has this as well right at his disposal. The reporting on this is not – it's not just horrid. It's like something straight out of a ma- an old Mad magazine. I it's mean, not reporting. Yeah, it's not. I mean, there are people that are that are doing spin coverage of it, but it's not reporting. Yeah. So now and so we now have the to attorney run, general. Came well, why in does the L.A. Times have to run interference or run cover for a corrupt politician? I, they all they know how to do. Well, there was an article, you know, lately L.A. Magazine. I give them some props because lately L.A. Magazine has been calling out some of this stuff. And they did a wonderful article that got picked up by Politico about the owner of The Times, who apparently his daughter, who was in WeHo, was was uh, there was uh, an effect on the editorial board. All of this BS about the L.A. Times having no influence by their owner is belied in this L.A. Magazine article because they're saying that the new editor lives across the street from Patrick Shunching in a house that's owned by him. And oh, but we're we're separate. We we have no uh, we have no influence. Here. So you read Gary the Warrant. Uh, that, yeah, the affidavit, right? Yes. Yeah. And um, it's and 37 it, pages, 36, 37 pages long. It's it's detailed. 
And it does not mirror whatever the reporting is on. Oh, on there are it. certainly nuggets from from that in there, but no, I've I've yet to read an article. And Mark has, as Mark said, I think he's been doing it to mess with me. But Mark <laughs> has sent me ten or eleven articles, and no, I've I've yet to read a single one that was written by somebody who just read the thing and then wrote the article. It just right. it's, not not it's one. The most frustrating thing in the world. Yesterday, the Attorney General Rob Bonta was comes in. And the reporting was the attorney general takes the investigation away from the sheriff. Well, wait a second. The, you know what the facts are? The facts are is the sheriff had already recused himself. After the sheriff watched this, he was so outraged, he wrote a letter to Rob Bonta saying this, there's obviously crimes here because they, they tipped off on the search warrant. Rob Bonta, in his letter, to his credit, led with that but said, I'm going to take the whole investigation. Well, that's fine. You would never know that unless you had read the letter and knew the backstory because the way it was reported was Alex Villanueva is this loose cannon, crazy— Somebody had to step in and take over. Take over. Right. For when he, he was the guy who wrote the letter. It's just—it's so frustrating. It so does not comport to anything related to the truth or the facts that you just say to yourself, I guess they assume. They assume people are so stupid— and so uh, illiterate that they can't read and they won't they won't fall. And by the way, who really cares, right? Because all they do is read the headline: loose cannon sheriff, uh, get rid of this guy, uh, taken away from here. But the overarching thing is, um, they, Sheila Kuehl and company, have, and I'll tie it into the homeless guy th- throwing <laughs> the guy who's throwing shit at the car. Uh, said he was a. Uh, Partially paralyzed or yeah, disabled. as he was standing up and throwing feces. You know, the, t- taking a dump in the street and then bagging it and tagging it and throwing it at an SUV, that's a very athletic endeavor. I, I, did you watch the guy do squats? If yeah. he, I mean, I, he could go to any time in the morning in La Cunata. He could do uh, probably squat 300. <laughs> so... In fact, so, given his given his girth, he looks like he is squatting three hundred. He loses weight when he squats, but not through caloric burning. <laughs> so, but what basically what I'm people that are listening around the country should just know, like just sort of overarching. Um, Sheriff Villanueva would like to do something about all this shit. The city council that created all this shit and the L.A. Times that endorses it are great defenders of what they've created, but they've created Sodom and Gomorrah. And so when somebody comes up and says, hey, I want to clean this up. This is bullshit. Taxpayers don't deserve this. Then the Times and the city council all pile on to the guy who's trying to clean up the mess that they created and attack the person that's trying to address the problem. Right. And there is and it is inexplicable because there's no end game. All they do is trash all they know how to do is slash, trash, and burn, and they do it. There isn't an, a, a, a fiber of intellectual honesty. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. Other subjects? Yes. The, we do. What do you want to go to, Mark? I would love to go to the judge in Florida. You got it. We'll, uh, we'll put that up. Why don't you set it up for Adam and explain which case this is? So this is the case. In fact, she got, um, she got some attention, that she being the judge. You may mm-hmm. remember she, uh, during, I think, jury selection— one of the prospective jurors said that she couldn't really serve because on a particular day, what was it, Gary? She had to go see her sugar daddy? Something like that, yeah. yeah. She had to we, go we see We played it sugar. on this show. It yeah, was... we played She said, I got to go see my sugar daddy. And the, the judge was quizzical about that mm-hmm. and, um, and uh, di- w- wasn't, uh, didn't quite understand. Anyway, this is the shooting case where – the um, Parkland. Yeah, Parkland. The high school the, in Florida, the tragedy mm-hmm. where 14 students and four teachers lost their lives. Mm-hmm. So this uh, – the the defense rests its case. Mind you, guilt has already been – they basically pled and it's just what's the punishment going to be. And so usually you put on mitigation evidence and I believe they did. But this is right as the defense uh, rested and this is – the judge's reaction because the prosecution didn't have any notice that they were going to arrest. Well, the, the defense had an 80 person witness list and, and they, they called were, 20? they were 25 in. Yeah. They're trying to get one shooter off of 
death row? Of a death, exactly. Right. Okay. Because if these don't have anything to do with your next witness, then why are we having the jury wait outside right now? Just because we were trying to move everything in because it, in terms of timing, we do it now. In terms mm-hmm. of timing, it would be much better to do it during the lunch break when the jury needs longer than you all. So we'll go ahead and pass on this. Let's bring the jury in, please. Um, Your Honor? Yes? Um, at this time, the defense rests. Other than putting in our records. We're not playing chess. I mean, will you please take the jury back in? Thank you. All right, go ahead and put in your records. To B. Nicholas Cruz Henderson, episode one record. Well, let me just stop. State, are you going to have anything ready for today? No. <laughs> We're, 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 us there was 80 witnesses. we're waiting for 40 more witnesses. I just want to say, this is the most uncalled for, unprofessional way to try a case. You you all knew about this, and even if you didn't make your decision till this morning, to have 22 people plus all of this staff and every attorney march into court, be waiting as if it's some kind of game now I have to send them home. The state's not ready. They're not going to have a witness ready. We have another day wasted. I, I just, I honestly, I have never experienced a level of unprofessionalism in my career. It, it's unbelievable. So, Judge, you have, if we had any pretrial matters, you asked us to be here at 915. We were here at 915 to discuss pretrial matters. I have been practicing in this county for 20 years. You know what? I, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear well, it. Judge, you're insulting me on the record in front of my client, and I believe that I should be able to. Okay, my you client. can do that later. You can put, make your record later, but you've been insulting me the entire trial. So, blatantly taking your headphones off, arguing with me, um, storming out, coming late intentionally if you don't like my rulings. So, quite frankly, this has been long overdue. She could work for Fox News, this judge. She's got the look. She's got the temperament. She's got it. You know what I mean? She looks like every angry chick on Fox News. It is It is kind of interesting, and I have been drilling down on this a lot on my podcast and with Drew as well, which is women are wired differently than guys, and they get agitated. They get irritated. They they sort of get you're against me and you're for me and they get pissed off and and as i've experienced with women once they get pissed off they're just they're just on a roll they can stay pissed well into the evening she has you know in the defense of the defense lawyer you talk about you know she's upset because she's wasted a day. Well, if you called forty more witnesses, how long is that going to take? I mean, would right. you be happy that every judge I know they want to move the case along? They want to, you know, we're worried about this or that. Why are you getting so upset? And by the way, when you say it's not a game, well, you know, I I beg to differ. Having done this for a while, there is strategy involved. There is chess moves involved. I mean, who are you kidding? This isn't a. This is somebody you're fighting for their life. You can't defend uh, how you see fit and why am I giving why if I'm the defense do I have to give them notice of what I'm going to do for the so day so why is the judge so irritated I, 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 there's I, a long history of yeah. those two sniping back this and is, forth this is, <laughs> this is what I'm talking about which is when uh, I've studied women not at a safe distance either I've been in the cage with them once a woman decides is that, is that the literal cage it's it's a gilded cage okay yes, but a cage but very- nonetheless <laughs> once a woman decides that she is bothered by another woman or she doesn't like this other woman then you could be driving down the street in the neighborhood and see that woman walking her dog and stop and pick up some garbage along the way and the woman you're with will comment or look at her picking up garbage like the queen of sheba you know and you just go it doesn't have to be all things all the time with this person you know what i mean like you can wait till they throw another jab wait till they send another snarky text like it doesn't 
once you get on the wrong side of a woman, especially as another woman, that you cannot repent. There's no second act. You will not come back. You're now the enemy, and I'm angry. And anything you do will annoy me. So once for, you once you the, annoyed the judge, she's now perpetually annoyed, and that will uh, that permeate every facet of this endeavor. I I did not. I obviously didn't have your insight into the human condition mm. to realize that. But I I was. I, the reason I told Gary to show it is I could not fathom what the problem was here. I mean, okay, I've got 22 people, as she mentioned. I assume the jurors and the staff and great. But I just saved you 40 witnesses. You should be cheering me. You right. Know, why Why are you getting mad? We are, we're, we've we truncated the trial. You want to get the trains running on time? That's, uh, that's what I just did. And by the way, I'm the one who's – I, you know, putting myself in the shoes of the defense lawyer, I'm the one who's got this client's life in my hands. I'm, you know, I have to live with it, right. not you. Well, she alluded to putting in an earbud or something like that. So showing up late after unfavorable rulings, like there, there has been a back and forth with these ooh, two for certain, and that ooh. she was resting vindictively. It, right. I mean, Once the, the judge is annoyed, they're annoyed, and then if the judge is talking to you and you look at your phone or you pick up a piece of paper, some that will then get filed under the annoyance <laughs> act. All all right, let me tell you about the Segura, the industry's most premium products, including highly sought after limited edition items, exclusive top shelf Segura samplers for brands such as Davidoff and Ashton, large wow. selection of high end boutique products and nationally distributed regular production favorites as well. Connect with fellow cigar smokers in their lounge, along with staff experts, manufacturers, and more. Connect with the community of cigar lovers, shop boutique cigars, and share experiences. It's a -a one-of-a-kind cigar-based community with a curated selection of industry-related content that includes reviews, pairings, beginners, questions, and more. Go to Segura.com. That's C I G. O-R-A dot com and enter code DOUBT10 for 10% off of your first order. That is Segura dot com and uh, enter uh, DOUBT10 for 10% off your first order. All right. In our last couple of minutes, what are you thinking, Mark? Well, I I think we would be remiss if we didn't. It just broke as we're um, uh, doing this is the Trump lawsuit filed by Tish James in New York which she's accusing the entity of uh, fraud and uh, a series of things. And uh, people will say, well, it's only a civil lawsuit. Uh, The civil lawsuit has enormous ramifications for his business entity. So one of the things is like Trump Tower. He's got the penthouse. It's 11,000 square feet. He told the appraiser it was 30,000 square feet or something. Um, Marlago, he had it at. $375 Three hundred and seventy-five million dollars. The appraiser has it at seventy-five million, and you know things of that nature. Um, but was she the one who just announced she was going to get Trump when yes. she got into yes. office? I, I, I will say this: whether you're a, a prosecutor from New York or you're the L.A. Times. It's like when the L.A. Times says, we endorse Sheila Kuehl. All right, good. Now there's controversy with Sheila Kuehl, and guess who's rushing to her defense? In Not only rushing to her defense, guess who's tipping her off about all right, the search in, in the form of an article. Yeah. Here's my problem. I don't believe you. And so when you announce, when you come in the office, I'm going after Trump, and I'll get him for something. And lo and behold, now we have something. I'm dubious because you announced, you, were, you told us what you were going to do. It doesn't mean he didn't do it. It doesn't mean Sheila Kuehl did do it. You've just hurt your credibility a little bit by announcing things in advance. I I, I don't get that. Yeah, and the the counterweight to that, I suppose, and the reason she waited is she was she being Tish James, she was waiting to get him under oath and have her deputies get him under oath and for him to invoke the fifth. Because is, is there, in a civil case there's a presumption. And that works against him. And the parade of horribles for him are bank covenants, 
and the uh, business licenses and not being able to do buy property or acquire I, property. So here's my head on this. I'm sure Trump is up to most of the shit that guys in his position are up to um, and maybe beyond. Um, I'm also sure if you wanted to weaponize the FBI and the DOJ and and Tish and everyone else and focus solely on the Clintons, you could do the exact same thing to them and their foundations and what they've uh, what well, they've done. By with the their- way, I mean, I you know, I just he died last week. Ken Starr, the Office of Independent Counsel. That's basically what he did in the nineties. So the problem is is what I what I'm seeing from Trump is he's probably up to half the shit they're talking about. So are many people in that position. What's scary to me is we've just declared war on him, FBI, DOJ, prosecutors, and whatnot. And I don't really like that system. Well, I, I, I have articulated this for, for years with you is I think, at least from when I saw it, living it, that uh, he was getting, Clinton was getting gored back, gored, p- p- mm-hmm. pun intended, back in the 90s on Whitewater. And it's, you know, uh, we were warning then, or I was warning at least then, that this is a horrible precedent because look what's going to happen when the shoe's on the other foot. And sure enough. As well, it's, 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 it's if, if the Republicans win the House and the Senate, then they're just going to shift to Hunter Biden, a Biden laptop, Fauci. Big guy. They're, they're, I mean, it's going to be nonstop. You're going to have, it's going to be Benghazi redux. Right. And, they're going to just, it's just going to shift the other direction. Then correct. we're just going to have all this stuff based on who's in power. Right. And then you say to yourself, why are people cynical? Why are people disaffected? Because they just figure that there there's going to be the sniping that takes place. And as you call it, the weaponization, I've always um, I labeled it the criminalization of politics, and and it's it's not a cool thing. Final thought, I think you found interesting. I uh, talked to Sammy the Bull Gravano, um, who's a, a very likable guy in his older years, mafia enforcer and made man and turned state's evidence and all that kind of stuff. But he's a, he's a charming guy. But uh, I was saying to him, what what's going on with the FBI? And he said. I don't recognize the FBI anymore. It's been politicized and like weaponized. And I said, yeah. And he said, I've spent half my life with the FBI. Like I lived with those guys. I sat and talked to them every single day. He said it was the FBI, not through a guy who used to run the FBI, but a guy who was on the criminal side of the FBI. He said, those guys were straight shooters. They were, they were honest. There was a couple of bad ones in there. Many of them became friends and they were just straight dudes who were doing the work of the FBI and trying to take down the syndicate. You know, like he saw them from the criminal standpoint as being much different back in the 90s, 80s, uh, you know, whenever whenever he lived with them. You know, nobody spent more time talking to the <laughs> FBI yeah, yeah, the than Sammy blood. the Bull Gravano. I mean, he just talked and talked and talked to those guys. And he said if they if someone got something wrong, a supervisor would go, you can't cook that. No, you, that doesn't match his testimony. Fix that. You know, this guy, one guy wanted to pal up with him and, like, be friends. He got fired. You know, you know, like, it was it was according to a, a mafia hitman, the FBI was a much straighter place than it is it's now. interesting you mentioned that because a case that's kind of related to one of my cases – just started yesterday here in downtown LA where they have a FBI agent on trial uh, for uh, basically being corrupted by the so-called, they keep reporting it as the Armenian mafia. And so it'd be interesting to see how it plays out today or tomorrow. In fact, the, one of the cooperating witnesses, guy, uh, our uh, Armenian guy named Edgar Sarkeesian admitted the day before trial was supposed to start last week, that he in fact was not really a lawyer; that he had paid somebody 150 grand to take the bar exam for him. Wow, yeah. that's good and, armo. Yeah. yeah, and and that that was that continued the case for a week, and now that trial's going on uh, as we speak right now. 
All right, well, I know you have a hard out. Yeah, I before do. we go, I'm going to tease one last story for, mm. for the next uh, bard that we're going to do. Uh, big news in the uh, in the criminal defense world, Adnan Syed of serial fame was released from prison this week. So we'll, oh, uh, yeah. we'll do a we deeper dive on that later. talk about that. Uh, but first, do you own or rent your home? Geico, sure you do. It can be hard work. You know what's easy? Bundling policies with Geico. G-E-I-C-O. By the way, we spelled it right. G-E-I-C-O. Makes it easy to bundle your homeowner's or renter's insurance along with your auto policy. It's a good thing, too, because you already have too much to do around the house. So go to Geico, G-E-I-C-O dot com. Get a quote. See how much you could save. It's Geico easy. Visit G-E-I-C-O dot com today. That's Geico dot com. Right, Gary? That's right. All right, and go to adamcrolla.com for all the live shows. Going to be out here at the Hollywood Improv in Los Angeles, October 19th, if you want to come by and say hi. And then uh, I got uh, my book, Everything Reminds Me of Something, that is out, and you can check that out. And you can go to adamcrolla.com for all the dates. What do you got, Mark? Well, I was just going to say, I saw something on Twitter where it was a clip of John Stossel uh, and you, and it's worth for anybody who, uh, rather than plug my stuff, I'm going to plug yours. Go find that clip. It's a great clip. Have you yeah, seen it? Yeah, I thought they did a nice job with it. Really nice job. I <laughs> mean, I best, was fascinated The best me. part is when the guy from the doctors goes, <laughs> you said uh, everyone's a pussy or old who's killed by COVID, mm-hmm. and, uh, when, and when any pussy's going to get played. What do you mean by that? <laughs> Exactly what I said. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or they have the other one where you know everybody went crazy when you said if AOC was sixty and husky, nobody would listen to her. And why yeah. don't you apologize? So it's well worth the five minutes and oh, a smile on your face. Thank you. And until next time, Sam Crow for Mark Garriga saying mahalo. Thanks for listening to Reasonable Doubt. Tune in next Saturday for an all new episode. Will you please kill yourself? Adam Carolla says controversial things. Please kill yourself. You're infecting my life. Lots of people like that. His podcasts, right from the start, were among America's most popular. He's hosted TV shows that became hits, like Love Line and The Man Show that he did with Jimmy Kimmel. Girls jumping on trampolines. The Man Show was criticized for its sexism. Today, it's Corolla's opinions that make people mad. You said, if AOC were fat and in her 60s, no one would listen to her. Well, that's a trip. That's, that's 100% true. Who, who are you to judge political uh, issues? You don't know anything. His comment about AOC drove leftists crazy. It's very predatory and creepy. He projects his sexism onto others. Mm -hmm. He thinks the only reason I would care is because she's hot. These talk show hosts saying, that's so sexist, but it's just true. Yes, if she was in her 60s and husky, nobody would listen to a word she ever said because she sounds like an idiot. Most people don't even know what socialism is. One thing he won't say is, I'm sorry. He makes that clear on the cover of his new book. No apologies. Why is that important? Apologizing just leads to more apologizing. When critics demand apologies, he says, they really want power. They want you to apologize because they want dominion over you. And once you apologize, they just keep coming back. And when they come after you, you say, you don't care. And you really don't care? No, I just happen to be wired not to care as long as I'm right. He says he was right about COVID. He was skeptical about the government's announcements. Turns out the people dying from COVID are old or sick or both. How many of you bleeps got played and who's going to get played next time? What exactly were you trying to say there? Exactly what I said. They didn't give the ages of the people who died at the very beginning. They never gave the ages, and I immediately got suspicious because it was a bunch of 90-year-olds. And for saying this, you get trashed by people who've been your friends. He's making fun of people for taking COVID seriously. (laughs) Adam doesn't believe in shampoo or soap. Yes, it's disturbing. Jimmy Kimmel and Howard Stern attack his views, but they are still his friends. Others have turned on him completely. Adam and I were quite close. Adam Carolla? Not anymore. What happened? Well, he's a right-wing troll now. Yeah, well, David Allen Greer's nuts.
I don't think people know that about David Allen Greer. Fortunately, most celebrities on the left are not as intolerant as Greer. Carolla does shows with Sarah Silverman, Bill Maher, and he debates. Absolutely not. I, I'm with you. I'm not. Well, I'm not with you. But conversations like that are rare these days. It is a new thing in the media not to talk to the other side. I could not disagree with you more. All my career, we had arguments, and we learned from that. When you're going to a bar, you want to sit next to a guy who's a Steelers fan, if you're a Steelers fan. That's why they have Steelers bars and Patriots bars. But occasionally, and it's part of your job, you have to invite somebody over from the Patriots bar, and you can have a, a robust debate on who's the better team. Free speech is protected. Hate speech is not protected. But now the don't even let them speak movement tries to silence robust debate. There's no free speech for fascists. I first encountered it years ago, working for 2020. I was assigned a story at Brown University where a kid had been suspended for sexual misconduct. He'd had sex with a woman who was drunk, and weeks later, she accused him of rape. The protesters offered me their microphone to ask a question. So I asked, what's the new definition of rape? Get off this Great. campus. We don't want you here. Rape, rape is not TV hype. They were screaming. Rape is not TV hype. Rape is not TV hype. And I couldn't even ask people over the noise. TV Can I ask hype. you why rape you're screaming that? Come on, everybody, louder. And it was this new culture that the other side should not be allowed to speak. I believe that they would let the other side speak if they thought they could beat them in a debate. Um, they don't. Corolla wants to debate, partly because he's confident about his ideas. And I think if you're intellectually honest or I gave you two beers, you would agree with me. <laughs> Agreeing isn't the point. If his ideas are bad, they'll go away. But it is important that people be free to speak. Performers feel pressure. There's a creepy PC thing out there that really bothers me. So let's celebrate those who push right back. The only way these people are going to go away is if everyone just sort of collectively and universally tells them to fuck off. I don't really have a choice as to what I say. It has to be the truth all, all the time. I'm a comedian. It's a sacred oath I took. It's, it's what I do. Thank you. You guys have been wonderful. Thank you so much.